If you're allowed to live in your truth, no matter how flawed it is, and I'm allowed to live in my truth, no matter how flawed it is, then the truth, the objective reality loses its significance. All right, so I kind of want to piggyback off of the last two videos I did about opinions because what I want to talk about today is kind of related to my stance on them. But in case you haven't seen those videos, basically I was just trying to present the idea that one, opinions can be wrong, and two, regardless of whether they're speaking subjectively or objectively, or in other words, whether they are a preference or a statement about reality, they can and should always be questioned. But today I want to talk about a phrase that's entire purpose is to force people to interpret subjective opinions as objective reality and discourage that questioning from taking place altogether. And you can probably tell from the title of the video, but the phrase I want to examine today is my truth. Now I have to be honest, this is one of my least favorite phrases to come out of the last decade or so, along with YOLO and Chugi. Uh, and hey, maybe I just don't like Chugi because it's millennial slander and I'm a millennial. But honestly, I don't think that's it. I just think Chugi is a dumb word. I don't have a problem with the lighthearted generational banter. Like, yes, go ahead and make fun of me because I'm obsessed with Harry Potter or because I used to wear skinny jeans. Fair play. But Chugi is just so weak. Like it's not slick, funny, or even fun to say. I'd almost rather be called a boomer because at least that's a funny word. But anyway, tangent aside, my truth is probably my least favorite phrase to come out of the last decade. And so if I get a little too heated or animated talking about this topic, I apologize in advance. But the reason I'm so adamant in my dislike for this phrase is because I think it's just flat out dangerous. And I believe it's dangerous for a few reasons. First, this shouldn't need to be said, but the truth doesn't belong to anyone. It just is. It exists entirely outside of personal belief structures, perspectives, outside influences, etc. It isn't owned by anybody. It's pure objective fact, plain and simple. And I know that we all recognize this in most contexts. For example, nobody's gonna argue with me if I say two plus two equals four. It's much easier to agree on objective truths in most mathematical and scientific contexts, seeing as there are adamantine rules and principles in these fields that repeatedly and reliably determine outcomes and conclusions. But in matters where subjective interpretations play a part in a particular experience, determining an objective truth can become a little bit more difficult. And it's usually in these contexts that the phrase, my truth, makes an appearance. If there are multiple accounts of a situation that took place, then this is where we'll see people, after giving their side of the story, exclaim that what they experienced was their truth. But the reality is that we already have words that represent what these people are describing. Perspective, perception, interpretation, viewpoint, impression, opinion, etc. When someone uses the phrase, my truth, what they're really describing is simply their perspective, but they're trying to pass it off as the objective reality. And the reason people do this is because we all recognize that perspectives and interpretations are subjective, and so they can be dismissed much more easily than objective truths can. And so by rebranding your perspective as your truth, you ostensibly make it harder to dismiss your subjective take. And in my opinion, this is extremely problematic, because since truth can't really be argued, framing perspectives as truths further entrenches people in their own subjective beliefs and interpretations. When someone declares that what they experienced was their truth, it is a sign that they are unwilling to deviate from their interpretation of that experience, even if it contradicts the actual reality of the situation. And once that frame of mind sets in, it becomes increasingly more difficult to have conversations with people in a genuine, earnest effort to arrive at a shared understanding. If you're allowed to live in your truth, no matter how flawed it is, and I'm allowed to live in my truth, no matter how flawed it is, then the truth, the objective reality, loses its significance. And we now live in a world where subjective experiencing takes precedence over objective reality. To put this into context, let's imagine a scenario where the phrase, my truth, was actually used in the mathematic and scientific arenas. Imagine a debate between two scholars. One asserts that two plus two equals three, and the other exclaims that two plus two actually equals five. Now, as you'd imagine, a heated debate between the scholars ensues, but before a resolution can be reached, the scholar claiming that two plus two equals five declares that, well, this is my truth. If we accept the validity of this this phrase as we do today, then this discussion comes to an end, since we'd be recognizing that someone's personal truth can't really be debated. But because the conversation ends, the truth is never sought after and agreed upon. The examination ends and the scholars separate into their own realities where they feel the most comfortable. And thus, no conclusion is reached since subjective experiencing is more important than objective reality. Now, this example is obviously ridiculous because, again, in the mathematic and scientific realms, objective reality is much easier to grasp. But change to 2 
plus two equals three to I believe Martin Luther King Jr. justified rioting by declaring that it is the language of the unheard and change two plus two equals five to well actually I believe that MLK unequivocally condemned riots and those who participate in them. And maybe it becomes a little clearer why living in separate truths is such a problem, especially today. And so this is why I believe this seemingly insignificant phrase is so dangerous because I believe it indicates a shift in priority and value, a shift away from valuing and prioritizing the infallibility of the objective to valuing and prioritizing the subjective despite its fallibility. And that's also why I'm so wary of anyone I hear using that phrase because consciously or subconsciously, there is an attempt there to dismiss any possibility that they could potentially be wrong about what they experienced or how they experienced it. And I think that possibility should always remain open. And I'll be the first to admit that being wrong, especially publicly, is simply a horrible experience, especially because we aren't very kind to people even when they genuinely admit their wrongdoings. And so there's a very valid fear of having to go through that experience. And I believe that fear motivates people to do whatever they can to avoid it, even if it means trying to claim ownership over the truth. In my personal life, I am exceedingly lucky to have some people around me who are kind enough to deal with some of the incorrect opinions I share with them graciously. But there are also people close to me who aren't so gracious. And in the past, I've had to admit to those people that I was wrong about something. And instead of just accepting it, they use it as an opportunity to throw it back in my face. And to this day, will still use it as evidence against me if and when I share a new opinion or belief with them. And yes, this is extremely frustrating to deal with just on a personal level, but multiply that frustration, shame, and embarrassment by thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, and sometimes even billions. And you can start to imagine what people might have to deal with if they're publicly wrong about something. And so I say this just to reassert that I also share this desire to avoid being wrong, but I don't believe that this means that I get to claim the truth for myself in order to do so. We quite literally literally have no right to use the phrase, my truth. It is, in essence, an oxymoron. The only thing that we can truly own is our perspective. And all we can do is hope that it lines up with the factual reality, aka the truth. And if it doesn't, then we have to be courageous enough to admit that to ourselves and diligent enough to do the hard work to get to the point where our perceptions match the realities. And on the other end of the spectrum, I think there needs to be a shift in how we receive people who genuinely admit to their wrongdoings. I recently commented on a video from a reaction channel where a woman was being undeniably ignorant. And of course she caught a lot of heat for it. So she puts out a genuine apology. And instead of just appreciating the fact that she was earnestly admitting her mistakes, the people in the video just decided to roast her apology. And of course the comments were generally in support of this roast. And this is the type of thing that I was referring to when I said we needed to change how we receive people who genuinely apologize. Making fun of her apology doesn't encourage her or other people watching to be as forthcoming with their wrongdoings the next time something like this happens now they know that they'll likely just get made fun of and lose all credibility. And if that was too niche of an example, then just look at the Will Smith apology. There was nothing there to indicate that he wasn't genuinely sorry for what he did to Chris Tucker. But of course, the popular thing to do was to break down his apology and look for every reason to claim that he wasn't being authentic in his remorse. And so with all of this, I believe I can understand at least some of the motivation to avoid being wrong and avoid apologizing. And instead to double down and declare that what you experienced was your truth and that you acted according to whatever this truth was. But regardless of of that motivation. I don't believe that claiming your subjective experience as the objective truth is the right way to avoid that type of situation. Again, it just diminishes the importance of objective reality and places subjective interpretation at the top of the totem pole in terms of what we place value in as a society. But in any case, I think that's going to be it for this one. If you made it this far, thank you for indulging me. I really can't thank you enough for just taking the time to hear me out. And I hope this made sense. As always, if it didn't, please feel free to let me know so that I can try to clear up any misconceptions. But with with that said, I wish you all the very best going forward. Take care of yourself and I will see you in the next one. Peace.